All right, what's going on guys and welcome back to the Evans Garage. Uh, today I want to give you an update on the Arduino based gauge system that I've been working on. Um, I haven't done an update on this in probably half a year, a year, but I've made quite a bit of progress. It sat kind of stagnant last year after, you know, I, I put it on the shelf and I, I didn't really work on it, but um, I've kind of been picking it back up just as a hobby in my spare time uh, with the ultimate goal of eventually having a fully functional uh, gauge system built into a gauge pod that I can fit uh, on the on the truck dash. Uh, what I want to do is have a very similar setup to those three or four, well in this case four uh, gauge pods set up that you can put on your dash, uh, but I'll likely need to get uh, maybe a 3D printer to finish everything off. I, I don't have a 3D printer yet, but right now I've just been working on the gauge system. so. Uh, I'll show you what I've done so far. So this is where I'm at now uh, with my analog gauge system. Uh, I don't really have a name for it yet, so if you've got a good name for it, maybe uh, put some comments down in the description box below uh, about you about uh, what you want to call this thing. Uh, but right now I've got, uh, I'll kind of work my way. Um, I'll show you this first and then I'll, I'll kind of explain everything going on up here. Um, but right here, uh, just to begin with, this whole system is based off of an Arduino, and they are uh, microcontrollers that are aimed at, uh, you know, hobbyists and, and electronic enthusiasts, where they make it very easy to, um, I guess, modulate the system where you can add, uh, they call them shields on top, and it's very easy to code, upload the code to the microcontroller, and then have some sort of, uh, you know, electronic system functioning the way you've coded it. So what I've done here is uh, I wanted to make my own shield to go on top of the Arduino uh, Mega. I don't have another Mega laying around. I have one in the truck right now and then one right here, uh, but it's the same form factor as this shape. So what I've done here is I've, I've designed uh, on the computer using a software called KiCad. Uh, I've done the entire layout of um, what I've wanted to do is input a whole bunch of different analog sensors and those will go into most of the analog pins on the Arduino and then I want it to output onto a bunch of screens. So uh, I basically need, needed to interface a whole bunch of those sensors and then output to the screen somehow. So what I decided to do was use uh, a whole bunch of connectors. So these four connectors here, I don't know how well you can see this, but you know, I, I got this printed in China using JLC PCB and it was actually really cheap. It was like $20 to get five of them. There's a minimum five. So uh, this is the front side of it. And then this is the back side of it. So you can design your whole layout on the computer and then have it printed. And then all you need is a bunch of connectors in this case, which I got. And then I had a few resistors for some of my voltage divider circuits. And then this little board is uh, just a mini breakout board. I, de I decided not to uh, design it into the board itself. Uh, I just wanted to kind of screw it right to the shield. And then that's for the EGT gauge. So, uh, yeah, that was probably like the hardest part. You know, that took me probably a week or two at least to design after I had my whole plan thought out in my head. Uh, so I'll run you through all of the sensors that I actually have on here. So these are mostly analog sensors. Um, so the sensors uh, that I have going into the Arduino, these three are pressure sensors. Uh, I'm going to use them to measure uh, boost pressure, uh, oil pressure, as well as uh, fuel pressure. Uh, not in any specific order there, but uh, these other analog sensors, these are fluid temperature sensors in a uh, casing. So you, I'm going to measure coolant and then trans temp. You can also measure any other type of fluid with that. Uh, this one is an open open element of the same type uh, of temperature sensor. Um, so I'm going to use this to measure uh, manifold air temperature. 
And then this one here is obviously the uh, EGT probe. So this is a K-type thermocouple um, and that is used to measure uh, high temperatures. So um, I'll be using that to measure the exhaust gas temperatures. So um, inside these, they're all, they're all the same type of sensor thermistors. They're non-linear, uh, so they were a little harder to program. These guys, uh, linear pressure sensors, uh, relatively easy to program. And then this last one up here, uh, this is a, a BME 280, which is really a, a full weather sensor. So with this, you can get the ambient temperature, the ambient pressure conditions, um, as well as relative humidity. And then using that, you can actually code um, to find out what the density is uh, for ambient conditions, as well as, you know, since you're getting the pressure and temperature inside the manifold, you can get your manifold, or uh, I guess they'd call it the boost density conditions. And then um, using that, you can find like the combined manifold density uh, relating to what your ambient density conditions are, plus your boost density conditions. So I'll go ahead and plug this thing in and then show you um, what I've programmed so far uh, as an output onto the screen. And then um, what I'll do is I've rigged this up so uh, I can test it with the air compressor. And then with these ones, I can just use my butane torch lighter to test out the temperatures. And then, you know, I usually just put my finger on the weather sensor uh, there. So let's get this thing plugged in. Okay, so I've got it plugged in here now. Um, this is likely gonna be flashing for you over the screen. Uh, it's not flashing in person. Okay, so uh, output onto these screens here. Um, what I've done is I've broken it down. Each screen is gonna have four different readings on it. Um, some of them are direct from sensors and some of them are calculated. Uh, so I've got a, the way I, I programmed it is I made uh, eight, boxes in each screen so like this one for example um, the text line is one box Oop. the text line is one box and then the numbers coming out is another box so on each screen i've got so the first one i've got my oil pressure and psi coolant in celsius voltage in volts fuel pressure and psi the second screen this is mostly coming out of my bme 280 so the weather sensor I've got the ambient temperature, the ambient pressure, the relative humidity, and then using those, you can actually calculate um, a altitude of some sort, but you need to reference uh, barometric pressure. So in this case, I'm referencing the international standard atmosphere um, to get an altitude. So for this uh, next one, this is all calculated. Um, so the top one is my manifold air density which is a combination of the ambient conditions and the boost conditions. So uh, I'm comparing this number um, to get this percentage. I'm comparing it to a standard day. So the J1349 standard day. Uh, and then, you know, using that number, it's a percentage of that day. So uh, in this case, you know, the ambient air density should roughly, if I'm in a, in an area or location, you know, elevation, that matches a standard uh, day, I should be around 100%. So anything around or around 100% or above 100%, that's what I'm looking for uh, for ambient conditions. And then boost conditions, obviously this is you know zero negative right now because there's no pressure applied to a pressure sensor, um, but that'll come from your boost condition um, plus temperature in the manifold. And then the manifold air density is just, uh, adding the ambient conditions and the boost conditions together. And then I haven't quite programmed this one in yet, but uh, what I want to do is hold whatever the max value is here, maybe for like five seconds. So that way when I do a pull, it'll hold the max value. I can read whatever that max density value is, hold it there for five seconds, 10 seconds, uh, just for like my own awareness. And then this last one here, um, MAP, so that's uh, just your boost pressure, and then below that, the manifold air temperature, and then below that, the trans temperature, and then at the bottom, the uh, exhaust gas temperature. So, if you've got any uh, other ideas for, you know, 
things that I should be monitoring on my truck, let me know. I've already got a tack in the truck, so I'm not bothering uh, putting RPM on here. Um, so, I mean, this one is really my only free spot. I just put that there because I kind of wanted to have a max value. I, I might try and figure out if I can get max values. Like, for example, this will display uh, a constant value and then this will hold like the max um, or the min uh, under load. So, you know, subject to change. Uh, you might also be asking, why are these values red and these values white? Um, so I can change any of the colors on these to anything I want, but I want the green lettering uh, to match most of the gauges in my truck. And then, and anyway, I can also reverse it, but I just have the, the data and numbers coming out in white. And right now I also have programmed in um, low and high alerts. So when this number, for example, um, oil pressure gets below a certain value, I think I set it at like uh, 10 or 15 PSI, that number will turn red. So I'll show you in a sec when I test it with the air compressor, but these all have low and high value alerts, um, not on these screens but these screens as well have low and high value alerts that will turn red if they get into certain condition ranges. Uh, and that way it'll give you, it'll give you a heads up as a driver, whether or not, you know, your coolant's getting too hot, your voltage is too low, your fuel pressure is too low, your oil pressure is too low. Uh, you know, your boost pressure is too high or your, your manifold temp's too high, your trans temp is too high or your exhaust camp, exhaust gas temperature. So that being said, um, this is kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, you know, next steps, I guess at this point is, uh, I just need to kind of wrap up some of the code to clean things up. Um, I still haven't fully coded in the voltage uh, sensor yet. It'll basically just come out a connector here and then go to the positive and negative on the battery. Uh, I just need to finish the code there. It's just a, a it's a pretty straightforward, uh, voltage divider circuit and then other than that um obviously i've got to when i go to put it in the truck to test it i'll need to extend all these wires wrap them i need to get a 3d printer so i can build some sort of casing for this and then obviously i'll need a gauge pod um, my plan is to have a four four gauge pod on the dash maybe i'll buy that auto meter one or maybe i'll get a 3D printer, design something, and 3D print the housing for these that might incorporate a housing for that. Uh, we'll see where I kind of go with that, but uh, this is the point. This is the point where I'm at now with uh, the whole gauge system. Um, I've been working on it for probably about a year on and off now, but uh, I think once it's all said and done, it'll allow me to have a pretty condensed system of gauges and I don't need to have, you know, in this case, I'm displaying 16 different values. Um, I'm not going to have 16 gauges. I'll have four gauges, which will be nice. And then, you know, this will, this will, uh, also give me the alerts on the high and low, uh, warnings, which will be kind of nice too. So, uh, that's where I'm at now. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you've got any ideas or suggestions, uh, just let me know. I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to make, uh, the code for this public just yet, but uh, I, I do have most of the code available for each individual sensor video that I did about a year ago. Uh, so you can go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. Cheers, stay tuned for some more in the future. So I'm just gonna do a quick test here. Um, I'll start, uh, I guess I'll start from left to right. So um, I'll test out the oil pressure first using um, pressure regulator <laughs> can't see it pressure regulator and an air compressor so i'll dial this right back first figure out which one's my oil pressure all right so i'm going to do the oil pressure first turning up the regulator so you can see i'm in the white range now and i'll get it up to you know I've got, this is a hundred PSI sensor. So above, what was it, 65 there, kind of back in the red. And then I'll turn it back down. I'm up to 90 now. 
as you can see there, going back into the white range. And then if it gets too low, back into the red range. Okay. And while we're on pressure sensors, I'll do the fuel pressure. So keep an eye on the fuel pressure, bottom left gauge. Above three, three PSI, I'm in the white. And above 15, I'm in the red. Okay, dropping back down. And the last pressure sensor will do boost. Top right here. Manifold air pressure boost. I've got this uh, above 30 PSI is red. It's a 100 PSI sensor. Uh, actually, it's above 35 PSI is red. Okay, and that's all adjustable too. Easy to change in the code. Okay, and that's all the pressure sensors out of the way. Now I'll take my butane torch and then I'll do my, um, let's see, let's do this uh, coolant first. So keep an eye on that. Coolant, slowly rising. Okay, and above 70 is in the white, the regular range in Celsius. I don't have my voltage hooked up yet. Um, right here is my ambient conditions. I'm just gonna put my finger on the uh, sensor. It'll change the temperature. It's gonna increase, I'm not gonna change the pressure. Uh, I could go up an elevation to test that. And then the humidity here. Uh, moving on to the Manifold air density, uh, air, ambient air density, and boost air density. Um, I'll put the uh, I'll put the pressure regulator back on the boost gauge, and you can see as I increase the uh, boost pressure, the boost air density will go up, along with the manifold air density. So if I'm at uh, 29, 30 psi. Uh, my boost air density is, you know, 200% of the standard day, and then the manifold air density is 300%. Okay, on to the next one. So we've done all these, and then moving on, we've already done boost pressure. So we'll do manifold air temperature here with the open air element. Okay, that's increasing, you know, 37, 38, 39. Uh, trans temp here. Increasing 21, 22, 23, 25, 27, 28, 36, 39, 41. And then the last one here, the EGT probe. If I don't run out of butane, 100. Oh, let's get it on here. 161, so I can get this up to, I think I have my alert at like uh, 650 degrees Celsius or so. Not sure if we're going to be able to hit that. I think 650 equates to 1250 degrees, uh, 1250 Fahrenheit. There we go. And then back down. All right, so that's just a, a quick test of the entire gauge system with the alerts. Um, thanks for watching.